There is no doubt about it that our childhood upbringing has a fundamental impact on who we become as adults, how we perceive the world around us, and how we interact with the world around us. This video is not just synonymous for people who grew up uh, with divorced parents. This video is also for people who grew up with one parent, whether you grew up with a mom or a dad, whether the other parent was in your life or not, or whether you grew up with two parents in the home but there were no emotions you know they were they were two parents who had unresolved issues unresolved emotions that they hadn't dealt with and didn't know how to deal deal with so there was a lot of immaturity coming from the parents whether you grew up with a stepdad or a stepmom whether you were raised by another family member or an adopted family it doesn't really matter if you resonate with this video you resonate with this video i think this topic is synonymous for a lot of people no matter our situation right i'll get into my story a little bit in a, a, here in a second all right um you know our upbringing uh, our childhood upbringing uh is is a, a a very integral part of our life you know it, it shapes how we feel about ourselves it shapes how we feel about other people it shapes how we feel about our family it shapes uh who who we feel we can trust and you know it shapes you know depending on you know what type of uh, uh, religion you grew up into or what type of non-religion you grew up into or just what type of ideology you grew up into it shapes your ideology it shapes once again your your moral system your your moral compass your value system so you know we inherit a lot from our parents our, uh we inherit a lot from the people who raise us one of the things that we uh unfortunately inherit sometimes as children is our parents pain and then we grow up often thinking that our pain is our pain when a lot of times our pain is actually our parents pain that they've dumped on us now hear me out all right uh how can you inherit a parent's pain well there are a couple ways that you can inherit a parent's pain and I actually have um, some notes up here, if you'll give me just a second and wait uh, for the article to pop up. Sorry, here we go. Here are some ways that uh, we inherit our parents' pain, okay? Um, our parents, or our parent, our mother, or our father, using us as a comforter and dumping ground for their unprocessed emotions. Us, meaning the daughter or the son or what, what, whatever have you, the uh, grandson, the granddaughter, the you know nephew, ne uh, the nephew, the niece, whatever you know, whatever our situation. Uh, we we need our 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 mother, our father, our our whoever raised us. We need their approval on all sp uh, on all aspects of our life. I'm sorry, before we're able to feel good about ourselves and our choices. I can check, check the both of these for me, all right? I don't know about you. Um, our parents, our mother, our father, whoever, our caretakers, finding comfort and having us as their pet who always agrees with their views. And they project us and block us out if we don't agree with their views. Or they judge us or criticize us, right? You know. When your mother, you know, criticizes you about that new nose ring that you got or, you know, the new style that you're wearing or, you know, your choice to, you know, drink or whatever, you know. Or, excuse me, I'm drinking water, but, um, you know, or doing whatever it is that you they, that you do or that you want to do to the, however you want to express yourself that doesn't align with you know how they view the world how they perceive the world right let's go on okay uh our caretakers our parents uh using us as a narcissistic tool to bring attention and praise back to them 
So, you know, when you'll be in the presence of other people and, you know, your mother, your father, you know, talks about you and your father, you know, or your mother talks about how long, you know, they had to, you know, how well your mother talks about, for example, how long she was in labor for you and, you know, she just brings like the attention back to her. You know, your parents bring the attention back to them. It's always about them. You know, that's what a narcissist does. They just bring the attention back to them. A narcissist wants attention on them at all times, right? Um, here's a good one. The child feels overwhelmed with their caretaker's needs, their parents' needs. They have to spend an inordinate amount of time care, uh, caretaking to the parents problems or worrying about the parent or worrying about the parents problems mother you need to stop smoking so many cigarettes father remember to take your meds uh you know grandma remember you shouldn't be eating you know all that salt like you know what i'm saying and then they guilt you into feeling bad or they guilt you into being on like you know what i'm saying it's all control it's all emotional manipulation all right This is a good one. Um, I think this is mainly, if you know, for a mother and a daughter type of thing. The mother must speak to the daughter every day or, or you know, several times a day uh, in order to maintain her emotional stability. And this is a really good one. Uh, but that can relate to any parent, right? Uh, the parent feels entitled over the major aspects of the child's life from physical items to personal details and information so you know one some ways basically that uh our parents cause us to inherit their pain is that they control us they they cause us to need their constant approval they cause us to feel bad about ourselves they cause us to you know self-sabotage ourselves they cause us to second guess ourselves they you know criticize us and always want us to want to bring us back down to to their their size they want to bring us back down to that little boy a little girl that they could control and manipulate and get to do what they wanted and get them just to you know be that perfect little boy or perfect little girl to ease their their wounds to ease their woes you know to make them feel good about themselves but you know as you get older and you become an adult you become your own person you become an individual and you know it becomes difficult to kind of seek your own way and find your own way out in the world Meanwhile, you're kind of still enmeshed with your parent and their pain and their need for constant, you know, attention, you know, and their need for constant caretaking to their emotional wounds and needs. And, you know, and the thing about this situation is that oftentimes we're seeking what we're really seeking from the parent is we're seeking that emotional nurturing, you know, we're seeking that um emotional con that deep emotional connection that we need from you know our parent you know that that makes us feel good makes us feel safe you know it feels like mean the whole time we're we're the one who's who's protecting the parent we're the one who's keeping the parent together meanwhile the parent is the one who's supposed to keep us together right that's how the story goes at least anyways so when the roles are switched and the child has to be the caretaker to the parent, the child has to be the emotional kind of rock, the rock for the, the parent to lean on, you know, and the child finally gets old enough for them to realize what's go to, go, going on, um, and then they switch the roles back, it's it's odd. The parent, it, it's it's a weird switch for the parent, and the, the parent may kind of slip back, you know, and, and try to get you back where they want you to go. But you just being aware, you know, uh, you you listening to this video right now it says you're being aware of what's what's going on. You've become aware. You've become privy to the fact that their pain is not your pain. And I think it's important for you to to give the pain back to the parent. 
don't wish the pain away. Don't don't wish the pain away. Don't continue to try to save the parent and save them from their pain. And, you know, it, it's impossible. Only we can save ourselves. Only we can be our emotional rock, you know. So so give give the pain back, you know. How can you give it back? Well, <sighs> you must stand up for yourself. You must not give in to their control tactics. You must be your own individual. You must understand that you cannot save them from their pain. You must understand that they came from an upbringing where they were raised by parents who were also, you know, in pain and didn't know how to deal with it. But you're breaking the cycle right now. All right? Just by standing up for yourself. Don't get mad. Don't get angry at your parent. Love them from afar, okay? And I think that's what's important is loving them from afar. You know, putting that distance. Emotionally detaching and, and physically detaching. Whether that means you, means you just need to stay in your room more often. You know, try to uh, avoid them a little bit. You know, or, or maybe, you know, if you're old enough, move out. You know, save up and move out. Get your own place. You know, move in with a, with a, a friend that you're, or a family member that you trust and that you know is is reliable and consistent and trustworthy and move out you know that's what i'm doing oh my story by the way well <sighs> i had a really weird upbringing uh my parents were never together they never married my dad uh ended up in jail when i was 11 and was not in my life obviously for a major part of my life and then he died when i was 18 it's interesting because my dad uh, never had his dad in his life. And in a way, the cycle, you know, could have kept going. Like if, if I didn't become privy to the fact that my dad didn't have a dad in, in his life. So, of course, how does he know to, how, how to be a dad if he didn't have a dad in his life to teach him how to be a dad? So I'm breaking the cycle by being privy to that and understanding that. In making a choice to be different from that point when I do obviously decide to have children. Now, I'm gay, so, I mean, you know, but science is making extraordinary feats these days, darling, all right? So, who knows what could happen 20 years from now. I'm only in my early 20s at the beginning of this video, which is another thing, you know. Um, learning all this, learning all of this at an early age, I wish I had learned this at an early age, if only you guys had known my high school self, and I wish I had kept all those YouTube videos when I was in high school, but I was making the Sims videos, so, I mean, ugh, anyways, you know, if only I had known this knowledge in high school, that I can't fix my parents, you know, I can't fix them, my dad made the decisions he did, because, He's his own person. My mom, maybe... Oh, my mom, by the way. Okay. Well, my mom... I'm not sure ever really healed from my dad leaving her. Interesting that my dad left. Anyways. Um, so she ended up um, marrying someone, you know, who, for the purposes of this video, I'll call my stepdad, all right? Not the best person didn't do, didn't set the best example for being a human being, or a, a father, or, you know, a decent citizen of the United States of America or the world, but, and I also want to add that a lot of times, you know, because uh, your parent is narcissistic, and because your parent has an, uh, unmet emotional needs they will often think of themselves first and their emotional needs first and put the child in the back burner and this happened to me often with my, with my mom i will be honest with with my stepdad who is still in my mom's life but you know i'm confident that i'm moving out soon i'm working very hard on my youtube channel i'm working very hard on my passions and that which makes me happy and that which helps to define my own individualistic identity 
Because that's what you need. You need an identity of your own and not of your parents. Not of who your parents expected you to be or who they want you to be. And oh, what was me because I've disappointed my parents and I'm not a doctor, you know, or I'm not this or that, you know, and I really want to be this, you know, over here. Well, you go be that over there and, uh, you know, let your wishes, your parents' wishes, desires, and hopes for you be their own because that's exactly what it is. It's their own wishes and hopes for you. You are your own person and your your own individual with a, your own identity right so anyways being sometimes looked or or at least i'm gonna own my feelings you know it's another thing owning your feelings i felt that often i was looked over by my mom my emotional needs were not met by my mom of course, you know, did I have a roof over my head, food to eat? Did I never have to worry about those things? Did I never have to worry about toys or, you know, things like that? No. But, you know, emotional needs, emotional nurturing, emotional security, that's important too, coming from a parent. Not, I, I'm not sure I got what I needed in that area. However, being privy to that and, and owning that is another thing that helps you to kind of heal and grieve and move on. So anyways... Um, you know, being, feeling, I, feeling abandoned by my mother, um, I had to understand that she was raised by a mother who was abandoned emotionally by her mother. So I can't blame my mom for raising me the way she raised me and continuing to treat me the way she treats me. I can't change her. I can't heal her pain. I can't cause her to, to see, you know. The self-destruction, I like, I can't, I, you know what I'm saying? I, I, as, as a human being, I, I, I as the son, I, I can't, you know, it's not possible. And, and I, I accept that, you know? Um, and that's breaking the cycle, you know? Never, well, would, never would I choose a man over my child, ever. Absolutely not. And that's one thing I've learned. That's the lesson I've learned to miss. So don't take the pain. Take the lesson. All right. Don't take the pain. Give the pain back. And in exchange, take the lesson. All right. And then pray that your parents' pain transmutes into a lesson for them. Finally, that they get it. That they stop going in the cycle of unhappy relationships, unhappy life, unhappy, you know, marriages, addictions, mental illness, drama, health problems, disabilities, a fear of abandonment, fear of aging, loneliness, financial, financial problems, you know, give that all that back. Don't inherit those things from your parent. You don't want that. You don't want the pain. You don't want the unresolved issues. Trust me. You have your own life to live, okay? You have your own pain to work through. Constantly growing growing and, and evolving and shedding old skin, right? That's what snakes do. They shed old skin. That's what exfoliating is. You shed old skin. That's what so the new skin can come through and be and, and make you look more youthful and bright. So be that bright, youthful spirit and, 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 and give the pain back. Don't inherit the pain. Inherit the good. Inherit the lesson. But don't inherit the pain, okay? Uh, if you would like your own reading, your own tarot, tarot reading or birth chart reading, please contact me at lamartownsandtarot.com. If you have any questions, please check out the FAQ section as well as the personal ethics section. I would love to do a reading for you. Um, I am of the light. I believe in God. I pray every night, every day. And I believe good will always beat out evil. And yes, there is a spiritual battle going on on earth. So which will you choose, good or evil? Which will you inherit? Contact me for your own tarot reading at lamartonsontarot.com or your own birth chart reading. Remember, we're not just our sun sign. We are a birth chart. We have our own individualistic identity in terms of a birth chart. You know, a birth chart is a placement of where the planets were in the sky at the time you were born. 
So yes, your sun is in a specific sign, like my sun is in a Capricorn. My sun is in Capricorn, so I'm a Capricorn. When people often ask you what is your zodiac sign, what they're really asking, unknowingly, oftentimes, <laughs> is they're asking, what's your sun sign? My sun sign is Capricorn, but my moon sign is Libra. Oh, what's that? Moon? Tell me more. So if you'd like to know more, contact me at lamartownsandtarot.com. You can also subscribe to my YouTube channel if you would like to hear more videos like these. Also, like this video and share with your friends and family. Follow me on Instagram at Lamar Townsend and like me on Facebook, facebook.com slash Lamar Townsend official. It's going to be okay. Remember, you're your own person. Stand up for yourself. All right. Thank you. See ya.